Hello, everybody. This is USB to PCE. And quite simply, this thing converts nearly every single USB controller I've tried into a PC engine or a TurboGrafx-16 controller. It works great. You can plug it right into the console. And I've had a really good time trying out some controllers and using this thing. It's pretty awesome. Let's take a look. I love the PC Engine and I love the TurboGrafx-16 and this adapter is pretty awesome to like extend the functionality of the hardware. But one of the issues I keep running into that concerns me is that I'm not sure how long my original controllers are going to last. I do love them and it's great to play on the original controllers. It makes you feel like, you know, you're back in the 90s playing your console and everything like that. But one of my small little gripes has always been like the D-pad and the for some reason, the more games that I play, the 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 layout, the you know, the small brick, the PS4 controller, the PS5 controller, even some of these newer 8-bit do controllers, for extended periods of playing time, some of these are really more comfortable with the handles and things like that. So just a quick overview of the hardware here. On the top, you got a USB-A connector, that's where you plug in your controller. And on the bottom there, you have a USB-C connector, and that's for firmware upgrades. On the other side, you've got the PC engine connector, which actually with the hardware. A little cable comes and this plugs in, you know, one side into the device here. And then the other side goes right into your PC engine. Connecting this to a TurboGrafx-16 is pretty simple. You just gotta grab an adapter. I happen to have one here. I didn't have to purchase one, but there is also one available on the controlleradapter.com website. And you just plug that side into your TurboGrafx-16. So I decided to upgrade the firmware before I started using mine. The process is pretty simple. You stick a USB-C cable into the development connector, and then you plug it into your computer. You drag a .uf2 file. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of that one before onto the device because when you plug this into your computer, it's going to read it kind of like as a an external drive and then the drive will automatically disconnect when the update is complete. I have been absolutely blown away by the number of controllers this little device supports. Basically, any USB controller that's wired in that supports X input mode is gonna be supported on this device. I've tried it out with the PS4 controller via a USB, micro USB, worked great. The TurboGrafx-16 mini controller, USB, plugs in, works great. I have hardwired the 8-bit Do Pro 2 controller. The 8-bit Do SN30 Pro controller works great. On top of that, it works with wireless devices. Also tried it with the PCE wireless controller from 8BitDo, works great. I even tried it with the 8BitDo arcade stick via wireless and wired, and it works great. It's really impressive how many different devices that this thing supports. The biggest question with a device like this is what's the lag like? How does it compare to actually using a real controller? I first wanted to test what the device feels like, and a great game to test this out on is Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse has a very small number of frames that you can execute a slide in, and so it's a really good test to see how well this thing stacks up to other controllers. And I'm happy to report it feels great. I was really struggling to feel any sort of difference between a USB controller and the actual original hardware controller. And I did them back to back, so I would go back and forth between the two different controllers. And I am happy to report that this thing feels amazing. And I really struggled to find if there's any lag or any difference whatsoever. The second question I had is, how is it gonna map controllers like the 8-bit Do or the PS4 controller? And I'm happy to report, number two button, number one button. If you put it in six controller mode, which is just a simple hold down the up button and the run button for a few moments, then you can actually put it into six button mode and you can actually use it like a six button controller might've been for the PC engine. I tried out six button mode with Street Fighter 2 and it works really well. You can see the difference here between when playing with two buttons and with six buttons. And Street Fighter 2 on TurboGrafx-16 is really tough to play in two button mode. It's almost unplayable. But switch it over to six button mode with a PS4 controller or that 8-Bit Do Pro 2 controller and it works great. The 8-Bit Do PCE controller works great with the turbo switches. If you're not familiar, I'll leave a little link in the description. You can actually change the amount of turbo that you want to apply, but it works wonderfully. And it's really nice to have the wireless access. So let's go over some pros and cons. It's amazing how many controllers this thing supports. I haven't plugged anything into it yet that hasn't been supported. Another great thing about USB to PCE is the customer support. I had an issue with my 8-Bit Do Pro 2 controller the first time I plugged it in. I messaged the website and within a few minutes, the developer, the developer, the person who created this thing, the inventor, <laughs> actually responded, walked me through it and wanted to do some testing himself. Truly amazing and really impressed with the customer support. 
I can really only think of two drawbacks. And number one is the cost. It is $60 US. Now, personally, for what this thing offers, I think that's a fair value, especially because I can't imagine a lot of people are gonna be buying this. We're a small community of owners, the folks who have PC engines at TurboGrafx-16. The other drawback that I would say is can't map controller buttons. All that being said, this thing is really awesome. I just keep getting blown away by the number of controllers that it supports. And it is literally the thing that stays plugged into my PC engine nowadays. That's when you know something's working is you're using it on a daily basis. So hope you enjoyed the review. And if you do get your hands on one of them, you use it. I'd be interested to hear your experiences, see if any of the controllers you tried out didn't work or worked a little bit differently. If you have used it, throw a comment down and be interesting to hear your experiences. Thanks for watching.